Do you have an 1877 Evans? Can't find ammunition because it's not out there? I'm going to show you how I make 44 Evans ammunition for these old rifles. Stick around. Okay, what we're going to start with is casting some bullets. These bullets are .419 diameter, so they're different than a standard 44 caliber. We'll talk about why a little bit later. Well, let's cast some of these out first. So I leave the mold up on top of the pot. That gets it warm enough to allow the lead as it comes out to flow better and we get better looking bullets. And that's it. All right, the next step is to put lube in these bullets. And there's lube grooves, there's two of them. And the very top one is for your crimp. So all I'm gonna do is dip it in here real quick. Up to the second lube groove. And that's good enough. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a sizer die for this. So I'm not gonna be able to smooth that out um on the bullet but i'll do it that'll still keep it clean and it'll still work for us so again we just get the bullet dip it in up to the second groove done okay now that we've had the bullets cast and lubed the next step is to get the brass ready so the brass that we're going to use is 455 super mag this die here opens up the case mouth so to allow that bullet to sit in there. At the same time we do this, we're also going to add a primer. So we're going to run this up, open up that case mouth, put the primer in. And there we go. Okay, for the next step, we're going to add powder to the case. So I'm using 2F black powder. Here's the case. What we'll notice is that this is 40 grains of black powder by volume. This 40 grains will actually go to the top of the case. And the next step would be to take a card. I like one of these punched out, you just set it right on top. Like so, and now it's time to seat. So we've swapped out dies for the seating die. We have a case here with the powder and the cardboard on top. We'll set this in. We have our bullet that's already lubed. We'll set that on top of the case. Run it up. Now what that just did is it pushed the bullet down and it crimped the bullet. There we go. Now we did get some extra loop. That's all right. We'll take that off. There it is. All right. Let's do a cartridge check real quick. So... Gonna get a cartridge, lay it in here, pop it open, falls in good. Make sure it goes into the chamber, close. All right, eject. Good to go. Let's go out to the range. All right, guys, so we're out here on the range to 
be uh, brutally honest with you, this is the very first time I'm ever gonna shoot this rifle. I've never shot it before. Um, all the information that I have for reloading this, I got off the internet. Let's try it out and see what it does. All right, guys, we're out on the range. We're gonna try this out. Um, believe it or not, this rifle will hold 26 rounds in the stock. So we talked about the bullet diameter being 0.419. Why was that? Well, the idea was that though the barrel is actually in 44 caliber, 419 diameter would allow multiple rounds with black powder. As the powder would foul up, it would still be able to, to function and fire, giving you sustained fire out of all those cartridges. So at the time, this was a lot of ammunition. We're not gonna do that today because I don't have the primers to do that, but I'll give you an idea of how this, this action works. Um, this is a, a neat, unique style of gun, but it does have its drawbacks. For example, if you wanted to top off the tube on a lever action, you push it in the side, you're topped off, you can fire four or five rounds and top it off again and continue firing. This one, if you wanted to top it off, you have to put them in the back, open up the, it's got a little trap door back there, you open that trap door up, you take a cartridge, drop it in, and now because it holds 26 cartridges, you're gonna have to lever this 26 times until it makes its way all the way around, back up into the chamber. So what I'm gonna try and do for you guys is I'm gonna open it and load one from the side, which is actually a challenge too. You can do them a little bit easier on a lever gun. And it is possible with these, it is just a challenge. There we go. So one is in, it's closed. Let's try it out. There we have a steel target. Nice, cool. This thing pops. It doesn't buck a whole lot. And as you can see, it hits real hard. Let's try it again. Brass came right out. What I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna take the rest of the ammunition I have left, I'm gonna put it in the stock so we could just see if we could just continuously fire once they get up to the chamber. Okay, let's load this up. Open the back. One. Rotate. Two. Rotate. Three. Rotate. Four, rotate, we'll do one more, five, okay, that's five, we're going to have to do this 20 more times. That was 22 actually, so I was wrong. 22, and we got our first cartridge up here ready to load. Let's try it out. Okay, fatal flaw for these rifles. If 
the case does not come out of the chamber. There is no way to push the next cartridge back in order to get that case out. So I'm kind of stuck. Give me a sec, I'm gonna have to clear this out and we'll get back to it. All right guys, I'm gonna show you something here. Uh, this gun is a nightmare. If you have a case that is a failure to extract. So the case is stuck up in here. Most guns, you pop it out, you continue working. This gun, you can't do that. This cartridge here gets stuck in place. There is no way to get that cartridge out. And I've tried. I was trying for quite a while until I got to this point where I decided, you know what, let's just break the gun down in half and check it out. So I have to split the gun in half in order to take the barrel out, which now I can extract that case and we can shoot again. So, to your benefit, you're gonna be able to see what the inside of the gun looks like. And this is what it looks like. There it is. So I'm gonna clear this up real quick, and we'll get back on, to, on target, and get to shooting again, and see what she does. All right, one more. Nice. Let's go check it out. All right, not too bad. That was at 50 yards. And hit quite a few times. There were a couple that uh, went over the top that front side. It was actually filed down a little bit more I have two of those rifles the second rifle the the uh, front side. It's a little bit taller. So I was actually aiming down here And it was hitting up here at 50 yards. So at 100 yards, it would probably be better right around here So that's it for today guys appreciate you guys uh, hanging out this far And if you have any questions comments concerns, please leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you next time.